You know when you're associated with a particular style of fishing across the entire country, you're a fishing legend. And Paul Elias is certainly that. He developed the kneel and reel style of fishing decades ago to help him to get crankbaits deeper in specific areas. And that technique and others have helped him to win a bunch of bass tournaments, including a Bassmaster Classic. Well, Paul lives not very far away in Laurel, Mississippi, so he's coming down to meet me today in Delacro, Louisiana. I spent the night here at Captain Jack Payne's Sweetwater Marina. And let me tell you, either me or Paul is not living right because the wind is howling. It's supposed to be five to 10 today. I checked a nearby buoy. It is literally blowing 30, 30. Now the wind is supposed to lay some as the day moves along, but that water is gonna be beat up. I know that. We're gonna have our work cut out for us, particularly this morning before this wind lays down. But I got some cleaning up here to do. Then I'm gonna launch the boat. Paul's meeting me here at 6 a.m. and then we'll be on our way. Wish us luck. We're definitely gonna need it. What's up, Paul? Yeah, you can stay there. Definitely. How's it going, man? Dude, one of us is, uh, is not living right. <laughs> this wind. Yeah. It's blowing. It? it is a blowing. They missed this forecast. We're supposed to lay down a little bit later today, so yeah. ho hopefully that happens. You got something I can carry for you? Let's see. I'm Right. Grab that for me. Yep, sure will. Can we take that life jacket? Yep. Yeah, that's what we're targeting. We might bump into a speckled trout here or there, maybe a flounder, but mostly bass and reds. And the bass in this area are not big. I mean, it's, yeah. I caught a two and a half pounder yesterday. That's, that's really, you catch one of those every two or three trips. Catch a four every, once every six months. What's that? Oh, you did? <laughs> I can't even reel that. <laughs> You're like, where's the crank? <laughs> That's how awkward I feel with right-handed gear. We're bucking this tide. It's it's pouring out of here. Well, right now it's rising. When you get a northeast wind here, it actually pushes water in. The tide's flying in. So what are you hearing about MLF? Any uh, tournaments going to happen soon? I'm going to have one the first. I think I leave on June the 4th. Oh, okay. I've never fished down there, it? You never have? Not in the summer. Okay. And I fished a lot. Always been in the winter. So are you liking the MFL format? Or are you MLF format? Are you, uh... Yeah, man. I really like it. Do you? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. And it, I tell you, it's, it's so time stressful, man. I just... I'm green when I come in every day. Yeah. I think fish can get that clock. Yeah. All right. Last, last year was a crazy year because you, heck, you had to catch one about every 12 minutes to stay <laughs> up. Right. Yeah, I took my buddy and his son yesterday. We fished a little bit. His son's seven. But it was really, we were just trying to get him on a redfish. And it, was, it was blowing so hard. My buddy and I caught a, a handful of reds. We, we brought crab nets and we took him crabbing. Yeah. He loved it. Did he? Yeah, we had a ball. Very similar conditions to today. I mean, it was almost identical. I fished yesterday afternoon. It really laid down. I got down to about 10, which after blowing 30, 10 felt like, like a picnic. Yeah. Oh, Todd. Caught you sleeping. It was definitely a redfish. Have you done much fishing for redfish? No. I've made a few trips down the tennis area. Did you, did you do some stuff 
stuff with a man springer wire. Yeah, it did. Uh huh. Did it, did it work pretty yeah, well? it worked really well. Yeah. yeah. Awesome, I was impressed with it. I haven't found an ideal hook to use with it yet down here. Um, I tell you what, I caught a lot of reds. Uh, yeah, I did catch some bass. I have to go back and look at the video. I don't really remember how many, but you know, at least a handful. But the redfish would, wouldn't leave it alone. Yeah, it's screaming in. Well, it's really hard to tell here. It's so influenced by wind. Yesterday, I went out fishing in the afternoon, it was still rising. It rose the whole day and was still rising yesterday afternoon. It fell hard during the night last night, but um, not very long. It's gonna end up re being really high today. You can see all this flooded grass. Yeah. It's up. There's a fish. Looks bass-esque. Is it a red? Yeah. He came up and shook like a bass. Yep, you're right. Need a net or what? Yeah. You gonna flip him? No, I got a, I got ice in here if you want to keep fish. Yeah, yeah I'd like to catch him. Alright. Okay. Yep, got him. Huh. I got one of these brewing coolers. Yeah, from, coolers yeah they really are, especially for the price. Yeah. Oh, that was that was insane. That was insane. Yeah, that that year, I think it was consecutive trips. We we caught five total, and I've never caught any in my whole fishing career. You'll see you'll see a million alligators today. It's it's really it's. I don't have any quantifiable evidence for this, but I really think. I really think it's impacting our fish populations. I ran a uh, a video last year came across an alligator this thing was 10 feet plus maybe even 12 feet had a big bull red in its mouth the red bull red's gone crazy trying to get away i mean they're big fish eaters and there's there's just so many of them down here yeah. but you know they used to be endangered and yeah. you know they were protected but and i understand I'm, you know, I'm glad they're back but just, yeah right same thing of course at least you can make boots out of alligators cormorants good for nothing so you still get asked all the time about the kneeling reel yeah you know people bring it up it's not quite as much because all the deep diving bait now yeah the last classes we had down here last day of practice I made a fish till almost dark and I was running back in to Dennis and I made a wrong turn no uh -oh. ran up on the damn mud flat that can get you in trouble in Venice It pulled you off? Yeah, wow. Yeah, it's like concrete down there. You can't get stuck here, but most of the bottom here is what we call gumbo mud. Just detritus, just decaying organic matter. And it's real soft. The thing with Venice, like even the guides, you have to learn it every year, you know, because all of the, the channels change with the high river. So that's a typical bass for us. <laughs> that's, that's just kind of average. This episode of Marshman Masson is brought to you by Matrix Shad and by Versamax Corks and by Bill Lewis Lures and by SportsmansOutfitters.com and by Death Grip Jig Hands. There he is. I think he's a red. I don't think he's that big though. Yeah, he's not big. That's what hit me. Set you free, big boy. See how far 
back here we can get. Something busting bait right there. Could be. I haven't seen any wakes, but this water's so up. Normally the reds you can see there, they're wakes. Yeah. Look like a bulldozer. Like, like that's almost certainly a red. See? And here, here's the dust cloud where he started. And there he is. <laughs> Nah. He's going back to Mississippi. There he is. Ah, a little bass. My crawl is destroyed. Another bass. Oh, a little better than the last. Oh my goodness. It's a carp. Look at that. <laughs> I've never had that happen, ever. That's one of them, uh, yeah, it's Asian, Asian carp. carp. He's making a mess, isn't he? I didn't know what the hell of that. Did he, did he hit you? Yeah, across the legs, and I was like, damn. Come I on. Kidding. I thought you had one. <laughs> I thought it was close <laughs> to the boat. I said, wow. Look at this. Now you see why these things could kill somebody. This yeah. thing's it's not a light fish. Golly. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's something I've never seen before. Me neither. That's what he's talking about, running down the lake now. There's a fish. A netter. Now you're gonna net him. Pretty fish. It's got copper color. He is with this. All this grass. All right. <laughs> he hopped on it. All right. Yep, got him. Look at the color in that fish, huh? Yeah, Boy, is that beautiful. <laughs> what kind of, what, you got a jig head or what it? No, just Texas rig. Oh, just Texas rig, okay. We're in the thick stuff now. Just one around, we ought to see him. Yeah, you'll get, I ran across a school, I was sight fishing the other day, about 10, I guess. But usually you'll see them in, you know, groups of two or three. That's kind of more common. So Paul, you fished a lot of lakes. Do you have one that stands out as your favorite? Kentucky Lake used to be. You know, I set that all the time weight record on Falcon. That's right. That's a great lake too, but yeah. it's been down. Yeah, it's not as good as it used to be, huh? Uh -uh. That record still holds, doesn't it? Is that a bass? It's not a bad bass, Paul. Not for the marsh. No, keep them in, right? I'm sorry? Uh, if you want it, you can keep it. I don't care. You want it? How your basketball skills? All right.
There he is. Yeah. You want it? What's the best month for trout down here? Actually, it's probably December. December is an excellent month. If you can pick your days, you don't want to go to the day after a front blows through. Are they deep or are they um, They're both. If you get those mild December days, you catch them on flats. If, uh, you know, if it's, if it's been a chilly December, yeah, they'll move deep. If they school up, they're, they're really plentiful. So, Paul, you were telling me earlier, you kind of, uh, you were involved in developing a, a new reel. What are some of the reel's features that are important to you? The most important thing I want to see, if, if my name was going to be on it, I wanted it to hold up. I wanted it to be a, a real good premium reel and market it at a price that, you know, that somebody could afford. So were you kind of involved in the, like the, the prototype that they, they send you early stages of the reel? Yes, they did. I fished with one of each gear ratio for several months before we went into, ma into manufacturing them. So you kind of told them things you liked and didn't like and whatever? And, yeah, and yeah. You know, just making sure that, the, that we had everything right on the reel before we got to market. It's a one-piece solid metal frame, which is which which everybody knows is very important. Right. It's got titanium deposition aluminum side plates, which makes it a stronger reel, but it also makes it a lighter reel. It's got duralum gear, the duralumin. It's easy for me to say. Mm -hmm. Duralumin gears, which are anti-corrosive, high-impact gears. They're they're very strong. The neatest thing about it is the cast control on the reel. You've got your standard spool tension knob here. But you've also got dual external ways to regulate your braking system on the outside of the reel. So you don't ever have to go inside, open the side plate or anything to get, get to the spool adjustment. And it's really neat because you can take this reel and you can go from, from throwing an eighth ounce to an ounce and a half. And then, I mean, in just seconds, you got this thing mm. tuned in to what you're trying to do. It's got 10 ball bearings. And it's got a uh, anti-reverse clutch bearing, so it's an 11 bearing reel. And it's just a really smooth, easy to cast reel. And it's a reel that's gonna last a person a very long time. And it's under $200. If you look at this reel and you take what goes into this reel, what it's made of, every other reel on the market's gonna be three to $500. And, and how many gear ratios does it come in? It comes in, in four gear ratios. We've got a 5.3, a 6.2, a 7.3, and an 811. Okay, and for those anglers watching who don't know, what what would you say is the, the perfect use of each of those gear ratios? What are they designed for? Well, if you start at the bottom, the 5, 3 to 1, to me, is more for bigger deep diving crankbaits. Also, I also like to use that lower gear ratio if I'm throwing a big spinner bait or something like that that's got a lot of pull in the water. I, a lot of times I'll go down to that five, three to one. The 6.2 to one, to me, is a kind of an all-around gear ratio. I like to throw square bills. I like to throw medium diving baits with it. The seven, three to one is probably the most, for me, is gonna be the most active reel. I'm gonna be able to, I feel like I can do anything I wanna do with a seven, three to one. I'm not a big fan of real high gear ratio reels. Uh, eight to one is definitely as high as I wanna go. Uh, I just feel like you lose too much power, which which eight to one is for rattling baits and and things jerk baits and things like that. To me, is is uh, is it's really good for ripping out of grass and stuff like that. But I definitely wouldn't wouldn't want to go any higher than eight to one. To one. Okay, and there is a trade off, right? I mean, you, you kind of mentioned it. If you get into those higher gear ratios, you do lose a lot of power. When right, you know, it's, it's kind of like it's kind of like a ten speed bike, right? It's it's the same concept, exactly. correct? Exactly. And I, you know, I really feel like like uh, once you get once you get above eight to one, you're taking in a lot of line, but you're losing a lot of power in it, and it's a lot harder for those gears to hold up. I think you're gonna if you, if you take a ten to a ten to one gear ratio reel, you're probably gonna start getting a lot of noise and and feel things coming loose pretty. You know, right. After okay. Several hours on it. And so somewhere around seven to one, seven point one to one. That's kind of your all around go to. Uh, yeah. That's a, a, seven, a guy who's buying just one reel. That's seven three to one to me would be the, the reel of choice. If I had twenty of these reels, I'd probably have twelve. You know, seven three <laughs> right, to ones. Right. 
and, okay. and split right. the others up. Okay. My son works at a, a tackle store, and he said if if a real company made twenty five to one, that's what people would buy. Oh, he yeah. said it's. It, they, he said they come in and they like, what's the highest gear ratio? That's the one I want. <laughs> yeah. You know, they don't know why. You know, and I, I tell you, a lot of guys will say, well, I, you know, I like to use it flipping because I, I take my line in so quick, you know, and I and I can get right back out there or pitching or whatever, right. you know. And not flipping, but yeah. But when you're pitching and, and reeling in and pitching back and reeling in, I mean, it's nice to take that much up. But when you hit an eight-pound fish with with a ten-to-one gear ratio reel, you have no control. Right. You, there's just no way you're gonna move that. Fish. Right. Okay. Oh, finally. Oh, nice bass, and he threw oh, it. Man. That was a nice bass. Yeah, it was. Three pounder, wasn't it? Yeah, it was about a three pounder, I'd say. Right, yep. Yeah, you got smoked? Come on, huh? Look, I'm So Paul, you still get nervous before tournaments, or you've been doing it so long? Uh, man, I Do you? I guess if you quit in the jitters, you just quit. Yeah. <laughs> it is. That's a, that's a big one. That's a big bastard down here. Just fat footballs. Yeah, they're short and stocky. Oh, the matrix crawl. Yeah, he ain't gonna throw it. You want him, Paul? Man, Paul and I faced some brutal conditions, but we were still able to put some fish in the boat and we had an absolute great time. And Paul was nice enough to give me one of his new Bruin fishing reels. Unfortunately for me, however, I don't fish right-handed gear, but that's good news for you because I'm gonna give it away to a viewer. All you have to do is go on social media, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, and post the following. Have you seen the new Bruin fishing reel? Tag me in it and DM me your email address and do it all before May 21st and I'll randomly select a winner to get that new reel. All right, well, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the Marshman Masson channel on YouTube. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so be notified whenever we post a new video. And until next time, if we don't see you in the marsh, we'll see you right here on Marshman Masson.